This is Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz. We're in San Diego County today. We are joined by Steve Goble. He is a councilman in the city of El Cajon. I want to speak with you sadly about homelessness. Recently, we heard the results of the 2017 homeless count. Los Angeles County really struggling, over 23% spike. Mm -hmm. The city of LA also 20% spike. Mm -hmm. All throughout Southern California, we're seeing spikes. San Diego County, I think it was five, 6% spike. What about in El Cajon? Well, in El Cajon, we have two different classifications of homeless. We have the sheltered and we have the unsheltered. The sheltered might be in places like East County Transitional Living Center. In El Cajon proper. In El Cajon proper. Uh, they also could be in uh, vouchers for motel programs. Right. Uh, and then we have the unsheltered, those that are living on the street or in mm -hmm. somewhere unsheltered. And what do we know from the homeless count with regard to El Cajon and numbers year to date? The unsheltered count went up quite a bit. I would want to say over 20%. Mm. Uh, the, the sheltered uh, is less than that. What is it? I understand that there's a large number of homeless in El Cajon, disproportionate compared to your sister cities and, and regions. Why is it that El Cajon is struggling with this crisis? El Cajon has three natural magnets mm -hmm. that some of our other cities don't have. Okay. Number one, we've got a, a trolley, uh, a transit, bus transit system with many routes, so it's very easy to get around El Cajon and to get to El Cajon okay. uh, from other places. That's one of the first magnets. One of the second is we have a lot of social services, uh, county social services, health and human services agency uh, are, are in El Cajon City. Why, just historically they have been? I think because El Cajon was kind of the hub of East County I where things started. I understand. Uh, and then we get, there's several recycling centers in El Cajon mm -hmm. and that can be a magnet for homeless activity. What's so interesting about the homeless crisis today, not just in San Diego or LA, but throughout the Southern California is traditionally we've seen homeless folks on Skid Row, whatever Skid Row may be for that region. Mm -hmm. Now we don't see that. We see homeless folks everywhere. Mm -hmm. And they're not just in downtown San Diego, they're in El Cajon. Uh, they're in Carlsbad. I mean, they're in Chula Vista. Nice neighborhoods, not not nice neighborhoods. This is a different homeless crisis than we've seen in the past. It is. There were typically homeless neighborhoods right. where they were kind of uh, confined or known to. Mm -hmm. But I think as that population has grown, uh, that's become a culture that uh, has expanded beyond its normal boundaries. And what's so interesting about this homeless crisis is that in the past we've heard either statistically or anecdotally that folks that were homeless came from elsewhere because of the warm climate or the social services. But we know about this homeless crisis is that's not the case. They're not coming from elsewhere. These are our neighbors. That's right. We know that approximately 70% of the homeless people in El Cajon are from East County. Wow. Many of them uh, lived in East County. Perhaps they got kicked out of their house right. because of drug abuse or other substance abuse. Uh, maybe they lost a job, but most of the homeless people in El Cajon are from East County. I wanted to ask about the refugee population mm -hmm. because El Cajon, I'll use the term is blessed with a diverse population. Uh, a lot of folks who are fleeing violence or persecution have landed in El Cajon. They've become members of society, a lot of them from the greater Middle East. H are we seeing those folks falling on hard times? You know, interestingly, that's one of the best populations for looking after its own people. Oh. You just don't see Chaldean homeless people. I understand what you're saying. I mean, that's not uncommon. So let's talk about solutions. We know friends in other counties or cities are looking at solutions. L.A. County, for example, the city passed a measure, the county passed a measure. I mean, they're really struggling. So you can understand why they may have passed. There are over close to 60,000 homeless in that county. What is either El Cajon doing? in terms of attacking this crisis or San Diego County doing in terms of attacking the crisis? Well, I can speak for our city and our partnership with the county. Uh, one of the first things I think a successful solution does is listening to people. So I went around and listened to a lot of the stakeholders. The police department has a stake in this. The fire department does. The waste management. Mm, right. People live no, in, in right. dumpster containers right. and, and leave things behind. 
Uh, we've got uh, the Regional Task Force for the Homeless for San Diego County. We've got the East Chamber or East County Chamber Task Force. We've got many different stakeholders. And I went around and I listened to all of them and I said, what do you need? What do you think is the solution? And overwhelmingly, the solution was we need a housing navigator. What and does that mean? A housing navigator is a, is a case management worker. Mm -hmm. And they work directly with a homeless person to say, let me find out what your, your needs are, your particular situation, and then I can match you with housing. It is a housing first model. I want to ask, ah, oh, I'm glad you brought up that housing first, because that is a model I've learned, actually developed in Utah of all places. Um, and what that model does is it doesn't ask and or demand sobriety up front. We'll help you get sober. Yes. Let's get you in the door. And so I don't want to take a position, but I appreciate I under, you know, the benefits of housing first. But I do want to ask, even aside from housing first, are the homeless in your community, are they willing to accept services? Because I don't want to cast aspersions and play into stereotypes, but you hear about the service resist resistant homeless person who doesn't want to talk to anyone. They want to be homeless. They want to be a bum, whatever it is. Help me through that. You know, and that's the first thing as I listen to these stakeholders, the police and fire, for instance. Do you know people who want off the street? Mm. That's the first group to start with. Right. They're saying, I just lost my job and I just, right. I don't have enough money for a security deposit. But if I did, I'd be back on track because I'm employable. And so the first group is uh, those that are ready and willing to get off the street. Uh, there are people who want to do that. We're not having the resources to get through all of the homeless. I don't know that we'll ever solve homelessness in entirety. But certainly it makes sense to start with those who want off the streets. But does San Diego County and or El Cajon need to go to the voters and say, this is a crisis, we need a bond, we need a sales tax, we need a whatever, some type of levy to address this crisis? Well, I think the smart thing to do first is try out a pilot program before mm. you go ask for more. Okay. Start with something small and see if it works, if, the, if you have the formula right. In this case, the Housing Navigator, we would fund Crisis House in El Cajon uh, for the Navigator position. And the proposal that we're looking at uh, upcoming mm -hmm. in the council meeting is to really target two populations. One is to work with San Diego County. They have Project One for All. Mm. And that specifically has uh, federal funding for those who are seriously mentally ill. Mm -hmm. You have to be categorized, diagnosed that way. Are you concerned, though, that federal funding may dry up with the new administration, arguably less interested in providing funding for social services? I don't know, but I can't wait. Mm. The people of El Cajon don't want to wait for somebody to say what's going to happen. The people of El Cajon are saying, please do something now. Do something smart. Mm -hmm. Do something scalable. But let's not wait anymore. So how quickly do you believe we can get a program like yours that you're describing in place? Because I can sense the urgency in your voice. Yes, uh, we are going to be voting on this proposal soon. Mm -hmm. very soon. Mm -hmm. And it could be as, as mm -hmm. soon as 30 days after that mm -hmm. because the funding is there. It's ready now. It's a green light uh, to right. if voted on. It could be in place within just two months. This is dramatic, and I appreciate your willingness to discuss this topic. People often want to just close their eyes and pretend like it's not happening, but the homeless crisis is real, and Steve Goebel from El Cajon is taking a serious look at it. My name is Brad Pomerantz. We're coming to you from San Diego County. You're watching us on Local Edition.